want to draw your attention to a sentence that appears twice on page 11 and once on page 14 of your syllabus. All seven components must be assessed at the proficient level or higher for you to pass. So at the undergraduate level, that's a satisfactory rating. At the graduate level, that's a, a, a passing grade. If you want to go on and be a teacher, you need to be assessed at proficient or better on all seven components. So maybe you might want to know what the rubric is all about, do you think? Okay, you're going to want to use the rubric to self-assess your components so that you know you're checking all the boxes. So here's the rubric for contextual factors. Now, note we're still in contextual factors. I told you we'll spend a lot of time on contextual factors and then we'll be able to go through the others more quickly. Okay? So we're going to look at the proficient column because that's what you got to do, right? In the example of a teacher work sample that I've posted on the website, you can look and you see that I don't have anybody's name. It's anonymous. The only name appears on the title page, and it's my name. Everything else is anonymized, right? I talk about the school, I talk, or I talk about the community, I talk about the school, I talk about my classes, I talk about individual learners. And then the last two things that I haven't already mentioned, indicator six, you gotta talk about the physical resources in the classroom. Now, some newly constructed schools might have smart boards in every classroom and a mic for every teacher. Are you in a school like that? You don't know, you haven't been there yet, have you? But if you're in a school like that, those are resources that you should use. Some schools don't have a smart board on campus at all, okay? Those two factors do influence how you plan and you need to be aware of it. And last, hence, indicator seven, identify two factors in the contextual factors that influence how you design instruction. Great way to do that is to look at the rubric, look at indicators six, one through six, and decide how does that impact how I'm gonna teach. How does indicator three in impact how I'm gonna teach? And that'll give you things that you can reflect on to include in that. Now, finishing out the rubric, um, it, it's my example, so we're going to assume that it does not demonstrate understanding beyond that of a pre-professional educator, because, you know, I'm not that spiffy. Um, I didn't describe the existing policies and procedures in the classroom. I didn't talk about the climate and culture. So there it is, my rating is proficient. By looking at the indicators, I've done all the stuff in the proficient column, so I'm proficient. See how that works? All right. So remember I told you I taught for six years, I'm a doctoral student. Let's say you're sitting there saying, but Lavery, of course you reflect understanding beyond a pre-professional educator. You're very experienced and you're a doctoral student for crying out loud. You should be that spiffy. What if I give you that? I would only have the one exemplary indicator. That gold box tells me I need two of them to be exemplary. So that component still evaluates at proficient. What level is this assessed at? Raise your hand if you can tell me. Yes, ma'am. Developing is absolutely correct. Because to be proficient, you have to do all the things in the proficient column. So the rubric is a really great way to look through and check off if you've done everything you're supposed to do. Okay? What about this one? Now it's exemplary because I've got all of the proficient stuff and two of the exemplary indicators. What about this one? No, not really. This is where, and I use this as an example on purpose because indicator P1 for contextual factors is one of what we call a hypercritical indicator. P1 says that I keep it anonymous. I didn't use anybody's name. So if I use somebody's name, that's not developing. That's unacceptable. Okay? 
There are five different hypercritical indicators. Pay attention to them on the rubric. I'll try to draw your attention to them as we go through the seminar. Keep in mind that the numbers required by the proficient column don't tell the whole story. Let me draw your attention to these exemplary indicators. In the first one, I talk about the policies and procedures. Do you think your, your supervising teacher has stuff that he or she already does? Yes. And if you come in and ignore that and just do your own thing, do you think that would be good for you or bad for you? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't upset the apple cart on your cooperating teacher. That, that's not a good thing to do. So that's that E2. E3, you know, every classroom has a climate and a culture. It's got a feel to it that develops. And if you're sensitive to that, you can reflect on how do they treat each other and, and what's, what's the, the disposition of the class, what are their go shared goals and things like that. That would be the second exemplary indicator. For each component, when you're done with each component, this is the last bit on the contextual factors, then we get to move a lot faster. For each bit, use the rubric to self-assess, submit it to your coordinator for evaluation. Because just because you think you've done everything proficient doesn't necessarily mean that they think that. And wouldn't you like to know that before grades are due? Okay, I'm just saying. You might want to flag each indicator in your TWS to say, this is where I demonstrated indicator P2. Okay? You can do that in Microsoft Word pretty, pretty easily. So click on the Review tab, highlight the text, then click on New Comment. You'll get this, type your comment there. So you can highlight the spot where you did what P2 tells you to do and say indicator P2. Then your coordinator can go back and look at that and say, yeah, I know, you were, I know what you were going for here, but you need to add this information. Or maybe you need to phrase it that way. Or, oh, I'm glad you flagged that. I read that. I didn't even register to me that that was indicator P2, because sometimes that happens. Right? So if you flag it, it's a lot easier for them to zero in on. Sound like a good plan? All right. The example of a teacher work sample does this extensively. In the example, I've flagged every indicator and how it's met. And you see those, those comments are a little bit longer. So they explain to you what's going on there. I highly, 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 highly recommend that you read the example all the way through and read all the comments. The only reason why I do not require it is because I am in no position to require anything of you. However, your coordinator, hint, hint, coordinators, your coordinator might require that you read that. It is ridiculously useful. Okay.